Hello there, I'm Jimmy of Vegas and this is the Ultimate Unity Tutorial and welcome to episode 7. So in this episode we are going to bring in a little bit more environment and we're going to create our weapon with some animation. Now we haven't dealt with animation before and we're going to start off with the basics of animation because there's a lot to it. Now uh, I did say we're going to bring in a little bit of environment as well just to kind of spruce up what we have here. And I think what I'm going to do over the course of this series is gradually bring in some elements of the environment just to kind of spruce it up and we'll also focus on other things as well during each episode. So for this episode I'm going to go to objects and I'm going to bring in a fence. So drag and drop into Unity and you can get this on the website for free. Head on over there, downloads and assets and the ultimate Unity tutorial. And it's just a case of drag and dropping just like everything else in this engine. So drag and drop and we have our fence and we could probably do an increase in the size of it. So let's try 100 by 100 by 100 and you can see, yep, still rather small. Let's increase the size again. It's all about how big you want things to be in your game. So in this instance, we have this fence right here and I want to place it against this wall here. And I'm not going to teach you how to suck eggs, guys. I'm sure you guys know how to place objects in and around Unity by now. We're already in episode 7, aren't we? So we're going to need to add a box collider to this object. So add a component. And let's go to physics and box collider. And you can see it surrounds it. Obviously, we know the colliders prevent things from, or rather us, from kind of walking through this fence. Because it'd be a bit silly if we could walk through it. So I'm going to hold control, press D and just bring it outwards and it's as simple as that in the sense of duplication and just making a fence be a fence. So I'm going to put these two together and bring them down into the ground to about there. I think we could do with moving this one a little bit closer, about there. And I'll do it one more time. So yeah, we've got a fence looking pretty decent there. Again, things with the environment is all about you taking a look and working out your own world and what you want to see from it. But yes, we cannot pass through this fence. So one thing to note here, it looks a little bit uh, barren. It looks a little bit flat, I should say. So let's go to our textures and you can see here we have the normal map. Let's just make sure it is selected as normal map, which I think it is. Uh, we may use from grayscale. We'll see what happens in the material, but we'll take the material and then apply that normal map into there. And we can instantly see it gives a bit more of an effect to it. It makes it look a bit better. We could change the normal map to two maybe to kind of give it a bit more prominence. Is that the right word to use? So yeah, I think that looks okay like that. But it's up to you how you guys want to work around it. <clears throat> so next thing we're gonna do is let's bring in a weapon for our character. So I'm going to go to objects again and I'm gonna bring in this ax. And once again, it is on the website for free. Downloads and assets and you can get it there. And it is just simply an axe model. So I'm going to attach it to our first person controller. So I'm going to take the controller and just move them out this way a little bit. Uh, drag and drop the axe into the scene and it is huge. So it's quite the opposite of what our fence was. So let's reduce the size of this axe to 0.05. 0.05 by 0.05 and it may disappear off screen but clever little trick we can drag and drop onto the FPS controller and then zero out the position and there we go we can see the axe so let's rotate or rather get the rotation correct so we want it facing this way because that is the way our character faces so let's rotate uh, by 90 Drag it forward, press play, and let's just see how it looks relative to our player. So yeah, I think that looks about the right size, to be honest. So next thing to do is drag and drop that axe onto the first person character. The reason we do it on the first person character is because, as you may have seen just then, when we look around with the axe, the axe kind of floats in midair. However, if we attach it to the character rather than the controller, it moves with us. So next thing to do is let's take this axe, let's move it to the right, and I'm going to rotate on the Y to about there and press play. 
want this axe to appear a little bit more normal than what it is currently. And you can see there's little flaws here and there, but what we'll do is decrease it maybe a little bit more. So four by four by four and bring it up slightly and press play. So yeah, we can see here, we need to actually bring it down rather than up. Okay, so that should probably do about there. Now, there are certain bits uh, about game development, i.e. if we uh, look at the floor now, we'll see the axe kind of go through it. Now, this is all to do with layering, and we're going to get into layering at uh, some point when it comes to development. But at the moment, layering isn't too important because we've got nothing to really truly layer within Unity. But as I say, we'll get round to it. So what we'll do is in the materials, uh, we can play around with whatever we've got. Uh, we could always duplicate the um, texture here, change it to a normal map. Let's add grayscale and click apply. And let's add that to our material just for good measure. And let's see how that looks. Maybe let's take off the grayscale and apply and press play. Okay, so yep, that looks a little bit cooler. Now, the idea of what we're going to do is literally animate a cube rather than the axe. Now, what I mean by this is if we go to the axe, right click, 3D object, cube, I'm going to then extract that cube out of the first person controller and increase its size to, um, let's have 0.1 by 0.1 by 0.1. So it's a little bit bigger. And if we zoom in on the cube, the general idea of what we're going to do here, in fact, I think that may be too small. Let's try... Uh, 0 0.4, 0 0.4, 0 0.4. Yeah, that should do. So the idea of what we're going to do to what, when I say animate the cube is the weapon is going to be contained within this cube down here at the bottom of the axe. The reason being is if we rotate the axe to say we're swinging it now, it may look a little bit silly. So if we have this cube, right click, rename, axe, object, and then redrag that back onto a first person character and then drag the axe onto that axe object and then turn off that mesh renderer. What it effectively means is that we can rotate on the Z and give a swinging impression of the axe. So let's hold control, press Z to undo that. And let's go to animation. <clears throat> now there's a couple of things here in the animation scene um, that you may not be aware of how it works. There are many tutorials about animation within Unity, but one thing to note is to make sure that you have whatever object you want to animate selected. And it's up to you whether you want to put the animation in the same folder as the axe or whether you want to create a separate folder for animation. I'm actually going to create a separate folder for animations to kind of keep them all together. So, folder, animations, and now, while we're in this folder, and while we have Axe Object selected, let's go to Animation, click on Create, and we'll have this Swing Axe. Now what we need to do is once we've been presented with this dope sheet, we click on Record. Now this sets everything in motion to record an animation that we can then either loop or play once, whichever we would want. In this case, we're going to play it once, but we'll get to that. Samples, 60, that means we're going to work in 60 frames per second. So one second of animation is 60 frames, as you would expect. Keyframe zero, right here, is the very first keyframe, i.e. the position we want the object to be in when we start the animation. We're going to have it in this place right here, and we're going to rotate on a couple of different axes. However, we want the rotation on X, Y, and Z to be zero, 65.75 and 0 on this first keyframe. Now we need to set these red. So what we can do is overwrite them with a figure and then rewrite them with a correct figure. Same applies here. So let's type 65.75. Same with the Z. We could put that as 1, then 0. And we've now set our keyframe. 
So we want to swing this over the course of, let's say, half a second, maybe, maybe, maybe less, maybe a third of a second. So by the 20th frame, which is a third of a second, we want our axe to be fully swung downwards. So let's go here, type in frame 20. And now we can rotate and move the axe to whatever position we want it to be at the end of its swing. So in this case, let's swing the axe downwards and we can rotate on the Z. So we want it to be there. And I think we'll rotate on the Y a little as well, that way. And next thing to do would be, let's say by the 60th frame, which is maybe one second. We need it to be back at this keyframe right here. And to do that, we just overwrite all the values with what they previously were. So 65.75 and zero on the Z. Then press the record button. That is the animation pretty much complete. And you can always work the animation to make it a little smoother if necessary. If we press play, it'll repeatedly play the animation. And we can see here that that animation is, it's not fantastic, but we can always modify it. So what we'll do is let's swing this ax a little harder. So let's press record and move this keyframe from frame 20 to frame 10. So just drag and drop to there. And on the first keyframe, let's also sort out a position. So position here is 1.1. So let's retype 1.1. And y is minus 1.09. And we'll just copy that one because there's a couple of decimals, but let's put one and then rewrite it with the correct number. And now what I'm going to do is on keyframe 10, I want it to actually move kind of this way a little bit and this way a little bit. And that means that, let's say, by half a second rather than one whole second, we want it to be back to its original position. So we can take this keyframe here and move it from the 60th frame to the 30th frame. And if we press the record button again and press play, we should be able to see a little something. So we've got more of a motion with the axe going right there. So. Uh, last thing we're going to take a quick look at in this tutorial is the actual animation file itself and how it can be applied to the actual object. Now, the component we have uh, by default is Animator. And we don't really want Animator because I feel it doesn't give enough freedom or control over our actual object. So let's right click and remove component. We still need the animation to work with this object. So what we need to do is click on add component and then we can type in anim and select animation. Make sure we do select animation, not animator. It is the same kind of principle. However, we can have an array of animations which we can control via C sharp scripting. So what we'll do is untick play automatically Select the arrow on animations and change the size to one. Before we can add this uh, file, what we need to do is actually change it to be a legacy file because it's actually going in the component of animation. It needs to be set as legacy. So if we go over to our inspector panel, the very top right, we have a little button that when we press, we can select debug. So select debug and then here you'll see legacy. Just tick legacy right there and then take yourself back to normal mode and change wrap mode to once. We don't want the animation for the axe to keep going and going and going. We only want it to be uh, used just the once when we command it to swing. So now on the axe object, just drag and drop the animation into there. And it's automatically added it into element one, but what we'll do is just drag it into element zero and rechange the size back to one. And I'm gonna save my scene right there. So when we press play, 
it won't animate. However, the animation for the axe does still exist. What I may do is, because I feel the first person character maybe is a little bit small in, uh, relative to the world, I'm actually going to drag and drop this item upwards. And what this will do is give us a bit more height on our player, rather than feel like a small child carrying around an axe. You can see already that this has kind of put an end to our uh, glitching through there, through the floor. However, it will still exist. So what we'll do next time, Ooh, forgot we did that. What we'll do next time is we will create a C-sharp script which will allow us to swing this axe on command. Uh, we'll add a bit of sound effects as well, and we'll see where we go from there. So guys, until that next episode, thank you very much for watching.